Part A. Listen to each word. Write the word you hear. 1. If you feel sick, call a doctor. 2. If you feel sick, call a doctor. 2. If the traffic is bad, cycle to work. 3. If the traffic is bad, cycle to work. 3. Don't stay up late if you're tired. 4. Don't stay up late if you're tired. 4. Open the window if you need some fresh air. 5. Open the window if you need some fresh air. 5. If you get too cold, turn on the heating. 6. If you get too cold, turn on the heating. 6. If you see Malik, tell him I try to call him. 7. If you see Malik, tell him I try to call him. 7. Remember to lock the door if you go out this afternoon. 8. Remember to lock the door if you go out this afternoon. 8. If you don't like your job, look for a new one. 9. If you don't like your job, look for a new one. 9. Help yourself if you want some more food. 10. Help yourself if you want some more food. 10. Take a break if you feel stressed. Take a, 
Take a break if you feel stressed. Eleven. If you're always tired in the morning, go to bed earlier. If you're always tired in the morning, go to bed earlier. Twelve. If you're stressed at work, go for a walk during your lunch break. If you're stressed at work, go for a walk during your lunch break. Thirteen. If you're always checking your emails, turn off your smartphone. If you're always checking your emails, turn off your smartphone. Fourteen. If you want to go home now, take a taxi. If you want to go home now, take a taxi. Fifteen. If you want to relax, watch a movie on TV. If you want to relax, watch a movie on TV. Sixteen. If you never have any money, don't overspend. If you never have any money, don't overspend. Seventeen. If you want to get in better shape, go to the gym. If you want to get in better shape, go to the gym. Eighteen. If you want those leather boots, buy them. If you want those leather boots, buy them. Nineteen. If you feel hungry, make yourself a cheese sandwich. If you feel hungry, make yourself a cheese sandwich. Twenty-one. 
twenty. If you want to redecorate your room, buy some paint. If you want to redecorate your room, buy some paint. Listening to problem solving. I just read this article about what life will be like in the future. You know, all the technology we'll have and everything. Yeah, I read that too. Something about computers? There'll be computerized refrigerators. They call them smart refrigerators, and they'll order food from the store for you. I don't know about that. They might only order healthy stuff. Well, I think it's a great idea. I hate grocery shopping. Huh. Question one. What are the speakers discussing? Question two. What do smart refrigerators do? Question three. Why does the man not like smart refrigerators? Now listen to part two. Well, how about video phones? I bet you'd like one of those. Actually, yeah. My friend has one. He says it's really good. Yeah. It says here that in the future we'll all have video phones and work from home. Yeah, I bet. Maybe we should get one. It's much easier to talk to someone when you can see their face. Yeah, but I don't want people to see me with no makeup on. I think I'd prefer a regular phone. But they're a good idea for meetings at work, you know, so you don't have to go to the office. But that's even worse. Your boss might call when you're still in your pajamas. Yeah, but working from home is still better. I hate driving to work every day. Question four. What advantages could video phones have? Question. Why does the woman not like using a video phone from home? Question 6. Why does the man think that working from home would be great?
Now listen to part three. Well, you're in luck. It says in thirty years or so we'll have self-driving cars. Oh yeah, the car will drive itself. I heard about that. That's cool. I definitely want one of those. I'll be able to watch TV in the car. Oh no, you watch enough TV. Anyway, I like driving. Yeah, but the roads will be safer. There won't be so many accidents. Are you talking about my driving? No, no. Question seven. What is expected for future cars? Question eight. How does the woman think the man feels about her driving? Listening to a daily life conversation. Hi, Fran. Good to see you. How are things? Hi, Hugo. I'm okay. You know, working hard. How about you? Oh, I'm good. What's that new gadget? It's a smartphone. It's a cell phone, and I can get and send email on it too. That's the great thing about new technology, you know. Now I can work any time, any place. That's true. On the other hand, the problem with technology is that you can work too much if you aren't careful. Sometimes you just have to turn off the phone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you mean. Gee, it's pretty noisy in here, huh? Yeah, there are a lot of kids here with their friends, and look, they're all talking, but they're not talking to each other. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're all on their cell phones. It seems kind of weird to me. I mean, these kids meet their friends here, and then they talk to different friends on their cell phones. It's just rude, you know. I know what you mean, but. I guess they're having fun. Well, maybe. Why do kids have to talk so loud, though? I don't think people should use cell phones in places like cafes, anyway. I'm not sure about that. Don't you think that's why people have cell phones so they can talk to people wherever they are? I don't know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's my phone. It's the boss. I, I better answer it. Hello. Question one. What are the speakers up to? Question. Two. What's new in the woman's life? Question three. What does the man say is a problem with new technology? Question four. What problem are the speakers observing around them?
question five. What best describes the speaker's opinions? Listening for information. What are you up to tonight, Khalil? What do you mean? You know tonight is sci-fi heaven. I'm going to kick back in front of the plasma and watch all my favorites. I should have guessed. Three solid hours of classic science fiction. Stargate SG-1, Babylon 5, followed by a classic episode of Star Trek. Life just doesn't get any better than that. Michael, are you going to join Khalil? No way. I don't like sci-fi shows. They're a complete waste of time and an insult to my intelligence. How can you say that? Oh, come on. Shows like Stargate SG and Star Trek are complete fantasy. I'd rather watch a show based in reality like CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, or one of the spin-offs set in Miami or New York. They showcase real technology. It's so cool to see how they solve the crimes using the high-tech gadgetry. Michael, you do know that they exaggerate the capabilities of that technology, right? If you really could process DNA samples so quickly, or identify a compound using advanced computer programming, crimes wouldn't be going unsolved for years like they do now. At the very best, it takes a DNA lab several months to process crime scene evidence. Okay, so they take a few liberties with the timeline to fit the one-hour television format. But the stuff they show is all real. Are you really saying that everything you see in those shows is possible in real life? You're misinformed, bro. CSI is partially science fiction, too. In the show I watched last week, the detectives broke into a lab where they were growing human body parts on the backs of mice. The mouse actually had a fully formed ear growing on its back. You don't honestly think that is reality, do you? Actually, the sci-fi shows that Khalil likes really aren't so different. Time-wise, those shows are based in the future, and your shows are based in the present. But many of the futuristic devices they use have inspired some of the gadgetry we use today. That's right. The communicator in Star Trek looks a lot like my cell phone. Okay, so you may have a point. And how about you, Aline? Whose side are you on? Actually, neither. I'm into shows that bring all the comic book heroes of my youth to life. For real? I never knew you were a closet comic book fan. So what you are saying is that you'd prefer to watch Superman flying through the sky than watch spaceships visiting distant galaxies? Well, there's something appealing about someone with superpowers trying to save us from the evil all around us. While I'm watching, I actually start to think that it might just be possible for someone to do something extraordinary to stop all this escalating violence around us. I guess that is the power of good science fiction. It makes us believe in the possibility. I read that applications for universities that teach forensics are way up since all the TV investigation series started. Yeah, and I've heard many inventors say that they were inspired by the sci-fi books they read and shows they watched as a child to try and make those futuristic predictions a reality. Well, I can't say I've heard of anyone putting on a blue suit and trying to save the world, but who knows, maybe we'll be able to develop superhuman powers in the future once we tap into our actual brain potential. Okay guys, I'm off. If I rush, I can make a big bowl of popcorn before my sci-fi marathon. Go at warp speed, my friend. <laughs> Later. Question 1. What are the speakers talking about? Question 2. 
What does the woman say about crime television shows? Question 3. What do the speakers say about gadgets today? Question 4. What types of shows does the woman enjoy? Question 5. What do inventors say about science fiction shows? Question 6. What is the power of good science fiction? Listening to a news item. There's bad news for students who like to use their mobile phones while they study. New research shows that students do not learn very well when they are texting and checking their social media accounts. The research is simply called mobile phones in the classroom. Examining the effects of texting, Twitter and message content on student learning. Researchers looked at 145 American University students in the classroom. Some of the students used their mobile phones during class, while the others had their phones switched off. The head researcher, Dr. Jeffrey Kuznikov, said students who did not use their mobile phones while the teacher was talking got higher scores on tests they took at the end of class. Kuznikov said that one of the biggest challenges teachers have in the classroom is the non-stop battle of keeping students working. He said many students felt that they needed to be online and checking messages even when they had important work to do. The researchers said that it is very common for students to be physically present in class but mentally absent because they are using their mobiles. Kuznikov said teachers were fighting a losing battle because students were more interested in social media than learning. The London School of Economics 
did a study in England and found that test scores increased by 6% after mobile phones were banned in class.